Jared Hatfield, and this is Tablet Tips. In this episode of Tablet Tips, I'm going to discuss how to really use your computer effectively as a note-taking tool. Now, unlike a traditional notebook and pencil and pen, a computer is a very complex machine and does require some skill to be able to use as an effective note-taking device. I'm going to go over some basic tips on how to do that effectively and reduce some of the headaches that you might have using a tablet PC as a note-taking device. First off, don't come to class with your computer off. Subnote here, don't ever carry your computer around when it's on. That's bad for the hard drive. So I probably confused you. Here's what you're going to want to do. Carry your computer around from class to class in standby. Now, Standby has been around since Windows XP, and Windows Vista has done an amazing job at improving, improving Standby. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, under the Vista Start menu, typically that power button right there will send your computer into Standby. Standby simply leaves everything on your computer in RAM and lets your computer turn on in just a few seconds. Typically, from completely off, my computer takes five minutes to boot. It's kind of slow. From standby, it's up in about 10 to 30 seconds. So getting to class, I can simply click the power button and I'm ready to take notes. Now along these same lines, leaving your computer in standby will drain your battery some. If you have 10 minutes, a half hour, an hour in between classes, this really isn't that big of a deal. If you have five hours in between classes, you might want to go to hibernate or turn your computer off. Don't leave your computer in standby overnight. It's a good way to kill your battery. Now. Along the same lines of battery, don't forget your power charger. You might not think you need it. You might not want to carry around the extra weight, but bring it with you. You never know when you're going to get pulled off to the side into a note take or a study session or something and want to do homework for a longer period of time. Now, with your power charger that you're bringing with you comes a few other suggestions. Plug in in a class if there's a power outlet, especially, especially, especially if they're sitting right there on the desk. If there's a power outlet in front of you, just plug in your computer. I mean, it's a no-brainer for me. My, my computer's a little old, two and a half years, so my battery doesn't last as long as it used to, so I'm plugging in everywhere I can. Now, along the same lines here, most computer, or well, not most computers, Windows Vista has several power settings, high performance, and power saver are the ones typically on every computer. If you're plugged in, you can switch to high performance. It might increase your wireless signal strength. If you're on battery power, you're going to want to be in power saver mode because if you bump up to high performance, you're going to get a, a pretty hot battery and it's going to drain really quickly. Now, wireless. If you're plugged in on a high performance, your wireless probably has a good signal strength. If you're on battery, you, you might not be as strong. But wireless is something important to consider when going to class. You might be in a class that uses Dino, for example, to collect in-class problems. Now, if you're not on the wireless, you're not on the internet, you can't log into Dino, you can't turn in the assignment, and you don't get the grade. So wireless is pretty important. Here's some tips on getting your wireless working if it's giving you problems. Tip number one. This is pretty simple. If your computer has a physical switch to turn off the antenna and turn on the antenna, mine has one right here in the front, you simply turn it off, wait 30 seconds, turn it back on, and your wireless will probably connect. That works most of the time when you're having problems. The second tip, if that doesn't work, that's typically the first thing you want to try. You can go in and typically there's a software combination. Now, this is also applies to those people who don't have a physical switch. On most keyboards, or on most computers, there's a keyboard combination. It is function F8 on my computer, for example. It'll probably be different on yours. That will turn off the wireless antenna. You can hit it again, it'll turn it back on. Same thing as the physical switch, it's just a software switch. Now, if that still doesn't work and you're having wireless problems, you can go into the control panel under the networking, disable the wireless. Again, wait a second and re-enable the wireless. This should work. Now, just for some background information, you might be wondering, why am I having these wireless problems? Shouldn't the wireless work? It works at my apartment. It works at my house. Why am I having trouble? Well, a lot of times you have a classroom with 100 students in it, and there's 10 minutes in between class, and those 100 students are replaced with 100 new students, all of them with computers. 
Now, this creates a lot of chaos in the wireless and it just caused problems. Be patient, do the tricks, turn off the wireless, turn on the wireless. It's a good start to get you back on the internet. Uh, th this next tip is kind of one of those tips that I don't feel like I should have to tell people, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. If you're using a tablet PC in class, don't forget your tablet PC pin. This should go without saying. If you're gonna take notes, if you're gonna have to turn something in on the tablet, bring your pin. Enough said. Now, this last tip here is a two-part tip. One, don't have unnecessarily, unnecessarily open applications. Close your instant messaging client, close your web browser if you don't need it, especially if you're on battery. Now, that said, one of the reasons you might wanna do this is it may increase the chance of your computer crashing. So, here's the second part of this tip. If your computer crashes, don't freak out, don't go crazy, nothing to worry about, your professor will most likely be understanding, and you're probably gonna miss some notes if you were taking notes in class, but you should have some other people in the class, unless you're by yourself in a class, in which case it shouldn't be that big of a deal. If you have other people in class, you can simply ask them after class, say, I missed a few minutes of notes. Typically your computer will restart in five or so minutes. That should be on the high end. And you can just open back up, take notes from where you can pick up and just fill in that gap later. Don't freak out if you miss some notes. Computers do have problems. 10 years from now, we might have tablet PCs that don't crash, but right now we still have tablet PCs that crash. So that about covers it. To summarize, bring your charger to class, bring your computer to class in standby, don't forget your pin, plug in in class when possible, and don't freak out. Just a few tips to hopefully ease those tablet PC pains that come with having a tablet PC. There's tons of benefits, but there are some headaches that go with it. As always, I'm Jared Hatfield. Thanks for watching. Email us. Our email address is stug at speedstug.com and our website, speedstug.com. Thanks for watching.